Hello again. Today I'm going to be reacting to a YouTube channel that I've never reacted to before. The Dead Meat YouTube channel. Very popular horror based YouTube channel and I've seen a few uh, videos put out by them. They do horror movie reviews and a few I've liked, a few I uh, thought were okay, but they're very popular and the Renegade Media Group, the reaction channel that inspired me to really get this channel going. I've done many reactions to them and they've been a lot of fun, been interesting, so I thought when I give it a watch I like to try and get to some channels that aren't completely channel awesome based either in the present or in the past. Today I'm going to be reacting to their video on the movie Pieces from 1982. It's a few weeks old right now. I choose this one because Pieces is a movie that is pretty uh, old and kind of dear to me. Uh, it's one of the first really gory slasher films I can remember seeing and I got it on this uh, 10 movie in one uh, box set, uh, 10 movies, Fright Night. There's a whole bunch of really cool fucking horror movies here. Um, Kill Baby Kill, Devil's Nightmare, God Told Me To, Good Against Evil, Kiss Me Kill Me, Satan's School for Girls, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave, Kathy's Curse, The Ghost. Just all types of fun, some foreign movies, and Pieces is a pretty crazy uh, foreign horror film, a uh, lot of gore, and I enjoy it, and I'm curious to see what Dead Meat has to say. It's hosted by, I'm sure everyone watching already knows, but the name of the host is this dude named James A. Janis, hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, and without further ado, Let's watch and see what it has to say about this old bloody favorite of mine. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and I'm waiting until I get vaccinated before I get a haircut, so just ignore it. Today we're looking I feel at that. pieces. It's exactly what you think it is. This 1982 co-production between Spain, the U.S., and Puerto Rico was directed by mm. Spanish filmmaker Juan Piquer Simón. His other Rest in peace. Was the movie. It may be the most shocking movie you will ever see. Simón's. <laughs> have a reputation for violence against women, and movies like Pieces are exactly the reason why. It's the ultimate example of the type of horror movies critics railed against in the early 1980s. Sleazy, stupid, and covered in blood. Usually cursed. This is why we love it. Saw, cutting into a naked woman. I'm not surprised that Eli Roth has been citing it as his favorite horror movie since at least 2000. I read that. <laughs> there was some amazing kind of junk food, just pure sugar, happiness equivalent of horror movies. It would be pieces. And as recently as 2019, That's a good way to put it. when he discussed it with me in Meetup, short-lived series on Crypt. Pieces is about a serial killer who murders young women at a college in Boston. The mystery man then takes their various body parts to make a human jigsaw puzzle using <laughs> their, you know, pieces. It's yep. a slasher by way of Giallo, similar to A Bay of Blood, which I'll cover next month. Except Pieces manages to be more graphic and booby. The first time I saw Pieces, I thought it was trash. And yet somehow, I've wound up watching it five times in the past two years. Don't get me wrong, I still think it's trash, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy its moments of absurdity. There are some scenes so random, I couldn't even work them into the kill count. <laughs> Casanova! <laughs> that doesn't make too much more sense in context. Also, even though it doesn't come close to matching the non-stop parade of bare breasts, there is a scene with a dude hanging dog. Respect male nudity on screen. Equal rights means equal sights. So, yes. I didn't even notice that the first time when I was a kid. I had to wait for the cinema snob to point it out. But isn't it all worth it to hear Linda Day destroy her microphone screaming bastard? <laughs> I think so. I will say that learning some behind the scenes info kind of dampened my enthusiasm for the movie. Things like some unsafe working conditions and casual creepiness from the director. Can't say I'm too surprised, though. It's obvious from everything I just said that this kill counts in the fast pass lane for demonetization. Since my editors and I need to get paid for our time, you know I got a sponsor to cover our asses. Whether your body parts are your own or be 
you use to make a human jigsaw puzzle, you might as well keep them neat and tidy with all the wonderful products from Manscaped. For instance, Trigger very popular Trigger sponsor. Every other YouTuber seems to be advertising, advertising, advertising this shit. Technology, so you don't unwittingly help <laughs> the pieces killer make their puzzle. Plus, its cordless rechargeable battery lasts for up to 90 minutes of use. You can whack a lot of weeds in that time. Get the Weed Whacker and other Manscaped products for 20% off and with free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash dead meat. That's 20% off and free shipping to all sorts of places by going to manscaped.com slash dead meat. In a movie that's known for grisly deaths and bare breasts, there are certainly going to be a lot of kills to count. Let's get to them. The movie begins. In Boston, right after Uncle Sam joined the big one. A ten year old turd named Timmy Reston sings Humpty Dumpty while doing a puzzle. A naked lady puzzle? <laughs> that kind of smut drives his mother into smacking mode. Yeah. It Jesus, lady, stop! Because it reminds her of Timmy's father, the bastard. <clears throat> bastard father, bastard mirror! She threatens to kill the type, but he beats her to the punch when he takes an axe and puts it into her head. Or against her head? Kind of bouncing it. Oh, no, it's in her head. Timmy makes sure of it. Yeah. He leaves quite the mark. That's yeah. quite an opening yeah. scene. The kid gets to take it care of with murderous glee. Timmy gets back to puzzling. He's really struggling there, huh, champ? But by the time the police come and discover his mother's head, Timmy's mm. wise enough to make himself out to be a victim. Big man, mommy. Oh, oh Timmy. That big brain move when <clears throat> Timmy is freed up and wins us a title card. Give me that bass note. <laughs> the U.S. and international version of Pieces takes its score from an Italian music library that the producers had a contract with. That's what Cam is. <laughs> Don't mistake it for the country singer. Director Juan <laughs> Simone called that music garbage. And the Spanish language version features an original score composed by Librado Pastor. Personally, I prefer the garbage music because I think Me it too. matches the garbage movie. Don't try to church up pieces with a piano, Simone. Forty years later, in 1982, a college student rides a skateboard how to care in the goddamn world. Too bad she's about to make a silent movie mistake and crash into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> the movie does not make it clear, but we see this otherwise random ass scene because it's what triggers the killings. Apparently the killer, a now adult Timmy, saw this accident happen in person, and it reminded him of that time he killed his mom. He then retrieves her bloody shoes and dress and gets back to that puzzle that bested him all those years ago. Maybe he could figure it out this time. Elsewhere on campus, a girl with her skirt way too high up on her butt is spotted upon by a dude. They went down in between shots. He takes that chainsaw and puts it right up against her neck, decapitating her in broad daylight and leaving her headless body with a nasty stuff. <laughs> I do like the backlit shot of the killer here. It's cool. The case of the headless murder girl is being investigated by Lieutenant Bracken, played by Christopher George, and his partner. Gone Tom too Cole. soon. They meet with the very English Dean Folly wants to keep this whole thing hush-hush, cheerio. Our version here amongst the alumni and staff will be that it was uh, an unfortunate accident. Yeah, sure. That student accidentally cut her own head off with a chainsaw. The cops meet with one of the victim's teachers, Arthur Brown, a professor of anatomy who gets teased by his students asking about their pectorals. But where are they? Here. Right here. Girl, don't give him that shit. You know where your titties are. I heard you over there talking like a poorly dubbed slasher victim. The most beautiful thing in the world is smoking hot and fucking on the waterbed at the same time. Hey, as as the, the Italians do it, so why not the story. Spaniards? Some actors weren't speaking English, or maybe spoke it with too heavy an accent, like Spanish actor Frank Braña. Who knows at this stage? We're just out buying clothes without labels and trying Leslie to... Leslie Nielsen. But even the American actors clearly dubbed over their own dialogue, because that's definitely Christopher George's awesome voice interrogating Professor Brown. So you say he didn't know her very well. Kendall James is a college student who may look <clears throat> like a nerd at first, but don't be mistaken, this guy loves. Check out the horny note he just got from his classmate Jenny. I want to do it underwater. See you in the pool. That's a good way to get a UTI, Jen Jen, and a good way to get killed. Especially after Kendall's underhanded air ball leaves the killer, who's comfortable walking around in public with that horny victim swimming pool in town. Jenny heads to the school pool and undresses herself in front of the biggest windows she could possibly find. 
The scene is a lengthy strip and swim set, scored by a relentless saxophone. It must have taken a while. All the censor barring with the title. They filmed pieces in Madrid during December. The water was five below zero and too cold for what Simone wanted. Yeah, maybe don't kill your cast, dude. Jenny's sexy swim arounds are stopped by a pool net over her head. And after the killer... Charming director. ...is the portiest pose possible, he goes and gets his chainsaw. Hey, actually, on second thought, maybe it'd be more porny if you kind of arch your back. Oh, yeah, you got it. Great <laughs> work, Jen. The naked woman's killed with a chainsaw, and the mystery murderer takes her torso home as a keepsake. It's the perfect thing to match that severed head he's got. Now, at this college, there's a groundskeeper played by Bluto himself, Paul L. Smith. His name is Willard, which, yes, makes him groundskeeper Willie, but I guess he's also the school's pool guy, because he's the one who finds the murder weapon there, his very own groundskeeping chainsaw covered in blood. This Not is the only smart move. blood that Paul L. Smith was willing to be in. He was reluctant to do a horror movie, and only agreed to as a favor to Dick Randall, the American exploitation filmmaker who co-produced the film. Since Kendall was at the pool, hoping to go for a soak, he sees Willard with the weapon, which is gonna make the dude a suspect. <laughs> he just stays calm. The crazy eyes are just oh, nuts. Spain. <laughs> Kendall, who is kind of a witness, meets with Bracken, and the lieutenant takes a liking to the lascivious lad. The admiration is mutual, and Kendall agrees to talk to the police's psychological profiler to help them learn more about the killer. But I don't know the killer. Or do I? Or does he? Bracken also introduces Kendall to a fellow police officer, Barry Riggs, an ex-tennis player who's been desk jockeying since she joined the force and is eager for more excitement. That's why she's going undercover at the university as a tennis instructor. Awesome! A kick-ass lady doing kick-ass things! Watch out for Mary, in case she needs any, uh, needs any help. Sure. Being watched over by a civilian college-age boy. Cool. Mary Riggs is played by Linda Day, who by this point had been married to co-star Christopher George for 12 years. The two of them acted together in several films and TV appearances, including horror films Mortuary and Day of the Animals, alongside Leslie Nielsen. Unfortunately, Christopher George died of a heart attack a year after Pieces was released at the age of 52. Linda retired from acting shortly thereafter. Riggs begins her undercover tennis mission, and apologies to anyone who actually plays the sport. It must be painful watching this, especially with a character who supposedly... Apparently none of them actually knew how to play. After Linda Day was cast, director Simone was told she knew how to play tennis based on an erroneous assumption. Entonces me dijeron, en California... Todo el mundo sabe jugar al tenis. That turned out not to be true, obviously. And despite some brief training for both of the actors here, it's clear they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> that young lady gave me quite a workout. Yeah, must be pretty tough keeping up with, uh, this. No judgment of the actors. They try. Almost as hard as the killer keeps trying to get this puzzle figured out. Gotta admire his persistence. Come on, grown-up Timmy, you can do it. Just, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got it. Time for another scene. That's so He's aerobics. ...by a former Miss Barcelona. Simone was unclear when he often and eagerly brought up that fact. It's possible that Miss Barcelona played Mary's dance instructor Carla, who was in an earlier scene with a lot of leotards that goes on for way too long. Though I kind of like the funky robot voice on the soundtrack. <laughs> Simone originally wanted all the women in the scene naked, but the dancing troupe he hired wasn't about to go along with that. Sounds like he wanted to make a porno. Simone talks about his female actors, whom 
he constantly refers to as girls. Entonces no hubo manera de quitarles las mallas. Now he's an exploitation filmmaker. And he's dead now. Or if the director is, I don't know who that guy is. Even though the killer is the neighborhood watch guy come to life, Mary doesn't notice his chainsaw when he joins her at the elevator. In fact, she recognizes him and isn't perturbed by his presence at all. But he perturbs her pretty quickly by cutting into her with a chainsaw. What? A chainsaw. What? A motherfucking chainsaw. What? <laughs> he cuts his kids. Kendall and a couple of cops find Mary's body, or rather what's left of it, since the killer has taken her arms. Let's break out the body part stretcher again. And full disclosure, yada yada yada, they do say she's still alive at first. But then this doctor tells Bracken she's not gonna live long. Another chance, Emily. Sorry. So, you know, under the count she goes. Damn. With another dead body, Bracken officially recruits Kendall onto the case. For God's sake, keep a close watch on Mary for me, okay? The case of protection. Well, I trust in this dweeb. In the meantime, he'll be looking for the killer, who definitely isn't one of these not suspicious at all folks. <laughs> Can you do? Catch up with Mary soon. If he doesn't, she might get accosted by the school's kung fu professor. <laughs> yep, this is the ultimate <laughs> random scene. That wasn't a shitty joke I was making. This guy's the kung fu professor. Hey, it's my kung fu professor. What's the story, child? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck either. He says a whole bunch of stereotypical shit, then jogs his ass out of the movie, never to be seen again. Pieces, man. I guess karate specialist and Bruce Lee imitator Bruce Lee, Lee with one E, Visiting the pieces set, and since Simone was trying to pad this thing out to feature length, he grabbed the camera and added the Kung Fu Professor. And Dick Randall produced a bunch of those movies. Yeah, does it though? After Kendall and Mary dirt bike away, we see a reporter named Sylvia Costa sneaking around campus. She was introduced earlier in a couple of scenes, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. There were some halfway decent shots for the scene in this otherwise slow and uninspired sequence. But it ends, quite predictably, with an attack from the killer. Sylvia winds up on a waterbed, mentioned earlier in dialogue, and is killed by a whole bunch of stabbings in slow motion. This scene feels the most egregious in its violence, even though the previous kills were plenty violent in their own right. That is my favorite kill, just for how bloody it gets. More brutal and uncomfortable than over-the-top Monty Python-esque blood sprays. That final stab, too, man. What a kill. The killer keeps up his puzzling both with the naked lady one and with the naked lady one. Despite clearly being a naked woman with minimal makeup, this is supposed to be the Franken corpse he's been building with his parts. Needing a lower half scale, he turns to his next victim, Mary's tennis student, Susie, who finishes practice early when band music starts blaring from the speakers. <laughs> was real.
chainsaw. Mary and Kendall get to the tennis courts. Where hey, they hey why, why, why they don't kill a real live animal? That music's driving me crazy. You and me both, <laughs> sister. While Willard finally shuts the music off, Kendall finds the dead body and directs Mary to it. And the sight of the remaining half of her tennis student Susie gives her pretty pee. While we were out here fumbling with that music, the lousy bastard was in there killing her! Shit, she's flipping lip. Ah, ah, Sorry, Linda, the sound guy says... Ah, in the background. I'm about to reveal the killer's identity right now. It happens in the most unceremonious way when Mary Riggs visits Dean Folly at his home. In the kitchen, we watch as he drugs her coffee. And I guess that's how we learn that Dean is the killer. There's not even a musical sting during that moment. Just Mrs. Potts getting all pissed. Why would they reveal the killer that way? And when the cops learn his identity, it's just as much of a wet fall. Is that a Wendy's cup? Apparently his mother was chopped up when he was a kid. It must have affected his mind. Listen, movie, I know the murder <laughs> you think? wasn't really the point, but you should at least grab my attention when you make the big reveal. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here wondering if Kendall's drinking from a Wendy's chili cup. Mmm, meaty. The Dean reveals to Mary that he's drugged her coffee and that it'll leave her physically paralyzed but able to hear and feel everything. That means that right now... Exodus 3. ...caressing on her way. The police arrive right as Dean Folly pulls out a knife, and before he can take its blinding blade to Mary's immobile body, they shoot their way inside. They find Mary paralyzed, and while Kendall helps her out of the room, Folly attacks him, causing Mary to hit the ground hard. Damn! During the scuffle, Bracken comes back in and squat shoots Folly in the face, ridding us of this movie secret killer once and for all. With the murderer dead, everything's okay! You know, once Mary can move and talk again. And then he's gonna do number on video to uh, the Dead Meat channel and the Kill Count series. Uh, I like that review. Don't think you fully embrace the uh, trash as a the cinema snob and I do, but yeah, I like pieces. 
It's a really dumb fucking movie. Pretty retarded in some places, but I enjoy it a lot, and this was a fun review if you enjoy the film, you enjoy the slasher genre, and James is a, like, some of his earlier videos that I've seen seems to have gotten a little better in his presentation, like, he's very rapid, but he's not quite as rapid in the earlier videos I checked out, and he's got a likable personality. He's got some fun jokes, the constant, uh, censor barring with the title was pretty cool, and, um, his talk of the director being pretty sleazy, well, yeah, he makes exploitation films, it's what you can, can kind of expect, like with Jim Wynorski. And the movie, yeah, it does have kind of flawed moments, but it's a fun slasher ride, and it was a fun part of this collection. The random Bruce Lee impersonator scene, uh, Dick Randall, he didn't mention it here, but Dick Randall produced a bunch of Bruce Bloitation films, so... I think, I think I read that he put it in there to kind of, like, promote the actor in those movies. And I might react to the Kill Count series again, probably with a co-host. I don't usually do these solo, but yeah, that was a lot of fun, enjoyable, and just felt like trying with somebody new. There's a whole bunch of movie reactors out there, and it's hard to know uh, which ones to really go for, but... I enjoy this, and and before I forget, I just gotta say, his reaction to the, uh, castrating ending was fucking hilarious. It's only second to the Cinema Snob's reaction, just a complete what-the-fuck ending. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but so a lot of stuff in this movie doesn't, and yeah, it, well, it's confusing, it is just so fucking gruesome, and his reaction just perfect. And that's all I really gotta say. Rambled on long enough. Hope you enjoyed my reaction to pieces on the kill count. And if you uh, want to check out the movie, I recommend it just from my point of view. It's a fun uh, exploitation film. Some YouTube channels have uploaded in its entirety because I guess the original copyright owners just don't give a shit anymore. It's almost 40 years old, and uh, that's about it. I will see you again soon, and if you like this video, give it a like. Maybe check out our videos on the channel. If you like those, subscribe.